Hey guys, it's Mr. Penguin Panda, aka Malcolm, and it's been a while since I've done a video like this. In-depth nerdy Stardew Valley stuff, so be warned. I'll talk about one of the most useful rings in all of Stardew Valley, the Burglar's Ring. I'll also explain how item drops work, what they're affected by, and how you can farm items or monsters that you need. And as always, I figured this out by looking into the game's code. Also, since this is going to be a long video with a lot of information that you might not care about, feel free to skip ahead to certain timestamps. And if you want to see more content like this, please subscribe to my channel, it will really help me out. Thanks. So first off, where can you get the Burglar's Ring? To get the Burglar's Ring, you need to finish one of the Monster Eradication Goals in the Adventurer's Guild. You have to kill 500 Dust Sprites, which are these cute black balls that jump around in the mines. You can also instead kill the dangerous version of them that look like mushrooms if the Shrine of Challenge is activated. But I think at that point you probably have the ring already. The fastest way to do that is by continuously farming levels between 40 and 70 of the mines since dust sprites spawn there very frequently. I'll talk about specific farming strategies later on. So what does the burglar Ring actually do? Whenever you kill a monster you basically roll a number for every possible item drop that determines if the item drops. The burglar Ring simply gives you a second roll. This means that it does not double the chance of getting items because that's not how math or probability works. What it does mean is that you can get two pieces of the same items and that in general the expected value doubles. So for example, dust sprites themselves have a 50% chance of dropping a piece of coal, so you get around half a coal every time you slay one. With the burglar's ring equipped, you would have a 75% chance of getting at least one piece of coal and sometimes even two for a total of one coal per dust sprite on average. Important to note, the game only checks if you have a burglar's ring equipped at all, though wearing two does not give any additional benefit. Also, the ring does not apply to every item drop in the game, which I'll explain shortly. So let me just quickly tell you about item drops before we move on with how you can farm enemies. But bear with me, this is going to be a little bit confusing. First off, luck does not affect item drops in any way except for two specific items. Otherwise, there are four types of item drops. First type are normal drops that are literally just a list of items in a text file paired with their drop chance. Every monster of that type can always drop these items if the code doesn't say otherwise and the burglar's ring makes you roll twice for them. Second ones are so called extra drops. These are drops added to a specific monster through the game's code and not in the files. For example, many drops of slimes are determined in the code by looking at its color. Items inside big slimes are also extra drops or generally many things where something in the game has to first determine what a specific monster can drop. This type also gets rolled twice with the burglar's ring. The third ones are special monster drops. I've talked about this in my lucky ring video. Very few monsters can be special and drop items like the lucky ring or the immunity band. And only slimes have the special antenna to differentiate them from other mobs. These drops are just affected by the location either the mines or the skull caverns and if they're in their hard mode. This also means that special monsters never spawn inside the volcano dungeon. These special drops have nothing to do with the monster itself, though the burglar's ring doesn't do anything in this case. Otherwise there are many drops that are determined by other fulfilled conditions scattered across the code like the location, if you have reached the bottom of the mines and so on. And all of those are not affected by the burglar's ring. But when does any of this matter? Most of these won't change the way you play the game, but in two cases this really does matter, the hot java ring and key beans. You won't get additional coffee drops from the burglar's ring, and you won't get additional key beans from monsters during the key scrub quest. For all other item drops not affected by the burglar's ring, I've compiled a small list which you can find in the description down below. There are also three items that are extra drops with a 100% drop chance under specific conditions. Any big slimes can carry a pink cake with a 10% chance. During the Skull Cavern invasion, they can also carry a Galaxy Soul with a 0.5% chance or a Key Gem with a 10% chance. The same also applies to Key's Hungry Challenge with a 50% chance of containing a heart. If you wear a Burglar's Ring in this case, you will get two of those items guaranteed. Pepper Rexes, aka Dinos, always drop either a Dinosaur Egg or one of the three Bone Artifacts. With the Burglar's Ring, you will drop a combination of two of those guaranteed. And remember that bone artifacts can now be converted into fertilizer with the newly introduced bone mills, so that's pretty useful. Metal hats or hot hats can drop a squire's helmet under certain condition, which relates to the amount of them you have killed. 
This basically means that after the first helmet, every 100 you kill drops a helmet guaranteed. Though you can get two of them at once if you still want more of those to put them on your horse, your children or sea urchins. And finally, if you've built a slime hutch, there's a 1% chance that any slime drops a slime egg which is not affected by the burglar's ring. But at the same time, which is in a different part of the code, 1% of slimes are guaranteed to drop slime eggs as extra drop. But this only affects the green, blue and tiger slime egg. I know, it's weird. So basically, you can potentially get 2 or 3 slime eggs with the burglar's ring depending on the color which I'll show on screen. I wanted to test this and thought it would take a while, but it actually happened just 2 minutes after I started recording, luckily. So let's just go through one example. When you kill a big slime, you will always roll for the slime item 3 times with 3 different chances and also roll for a draft scroll 4. This means you can get between 1 to 3 slime and 1 draft scroll. But with the burglar's ring you could get up to 6 slime and 2 draft scrolls. With a pink cake inside, you're guaranteed to get 2 of those with the burglar's ring. There's also a chance for a prismatic shard or diamond if you've reached the bottom of the mines, but you'll never get two of those with the burglar's ring. So with all this information, what rings should you use? The important takeaway is that in general the burglar's ring will double the amount of items you get over a long period of time. So just always carrying a burglar's ring with you is a good idea. To really optimize skull cavern runs or mining, you can change to the burglar's ring whenever you slay monsters. So change the combination of the burglar's ring with other effects that trigger when slaying monsters. For example, the hot java ring or the savage ring. After that, change to lucky rings while destroying rocks to increase the amount of ores you get and increase the chances of ladders spawning. Especially since luck doesn't matter for item drops. You can then combine these lucky rings with iridium bands for the lighting and magnetism to pick up all the items you've gotten. When you really want to go to the extreme, you could even choose to only swap to magnetic rings while you're in your inventory since you can pick up items while paused and then remove the rings again. It's very tedious though, so you decide if that's too extreme. But if you're ever really short on time, this might be a possibility. One possible setup for farming monsters could be a burglar's ring plus a hot java ring, and a savage ring plus another hot java ring. And for mining or magnetism, you could simply use two radium bands plus two lucky rings, or a combination of the new glowstone ring with other rings that give you magnetism. Where and what items can you farm though? You can of course just do the Skull Cavern, Key Quests and the Volcano Dungeon regularly to get many different types of items. But if you're looking for specific items, you should try to look for monsters that drop them in the mines or the Skull Cavern while also using the new Monster Musk that doubles the chance of monsters spawning. You can get the recipe from the Wizard's Special Order, Prismatic Jelly. Don't worry, it stacks with all other drink buffs and lasts 10 minutes which is basically half a day. To farm the mines, keep resetting the level with the elevator. Enter the level, check for monsters you want to farm, kill them if they're not too far out of the way and immediately head back to level 0 and repeat. This way you barely waste any in-game time. It might also be useful to enable zoom buttons in the menu to see more of the area depending on the platform you're playing on. But what are the best spots for farming? First, normal mines. Level 15 is probably the best level to farm for Duggies for the monster eradication goal, but it's still pretty slow overall. Level 25 is pretty useful. You can farm weeds and buckmeat if you need those, but especially the ancient seed artifact can be gotten with a 0.5% chance from all types of bugs. Though if you're still very early into the game, this is a pretty good way to acquire your first seed and then get your ancient fruit empire going when you get the seed maker eventually. Level 45, 55 or 65 are the best levels to farm for coal or for the dust rate goal if you still need the burglar's ring. This is also the best level to farm for bats and their bat wings, especially since you might need them for more monster musk. And sometimes you'll also have some ghosts for some solar essence. On level 75 you can farm bone shards or just a skeleton gold. It's kinda slow though in my opinion. Level 85, 95 or 105 can have shadow brutes and shamans for tons of different drops including void essence. Now let's talk about the hard mode mines. Most of the stuff stays the same when the Shrine of Challenge is activated, with the main difference being increased monster spawns. What's new is that level 15 and 25 can be used to farm squidding from blue squids with a 20% chance in case you need it for cooking recipes. Level 55 and 65 can be used to farm the new spiders for all kinds of items, especially void essence and also coffee if you have the hot java ring. Using a hammer with the buck killer enchant can make this pretty easy. And what about the skull caverns? Just do normal skull cavern runs and use bombs and explosive ammo while just killing things in the meanwhile. 
Besides the Iridium Ore, the caverns are probably the best way to get the crap eradication goal as well if you still need it. And of course try to kill all the ghosts for Omni Geodes, mummies for cloth and solar essence and serpents for void essence. Otherwise there are only two noteworthy things in a skull cavern. Every floor that is not a mummy floor and is a multiple of 20, so floor 20, 40, 60 etc will mostly contain bats. But every level that is higher than 50 will spawn iridium bats instead of the usual lava bats. Only lava bats drop bat wings if you need those, while the iridium bats just drop iridium amongst other things. And every 16 floors, starting with floor 8, will only contain armored bugs, which you can damage with the bug killer enchant. They only drop bug meat and bug steaks though. What about the volcano dungeon or the quarry? You can't reset the volcano dungeon nor the quarries, so there's no real way of farming besides just doing them every day. Noteworthy items in the volcano dungeon besides the stuff you can get from chests are cinder shards from magma sprites, sparkers and duggies, tiger slime eggs from slimes and especially dragon tubes from level lurks which you might want to trade for banana saplings. But what about farming special items? What if you're still looking for items like the immunity band or the lucky ring? The lucky ring can also be gotten by panning but maybe you don't want to do that. You have to find special monsters or special crates which are very rare. Best advice is to just go through the skull cavern normally while farming iridium, treasure rooms or whatever you want while also using monster musk. Just kill monsters and destroy all crates along the way. Or just reset levels to farm items like mentioned before and eventually some monsters will be special ones. There are some other ways to increase your chances though but they aren't worth farming for I would say. You might have noticed that there are many wooden platforms with groups of barrels and crates in both the mines and the skull cavern. After destroying them they never respawn, so you can't farm them. But after that monsters might spawn at those spots instead and there's a 1% chance of it turning special which is higher than usual. At the same time levels that don't end with 0, 1, 5 or 6 also have a high chance of spawning special slimes, probably to prevent resetting for them. So it kinda evens out and just going for normal runs is probably the best option. There's one last important strategy that I want to talk about. That's looking for infested floors or slime floors in the mines. Note, amongst other conditions, elevator levels cannot be infested floors. If you find an infested level, the same level will be infested for the whole day. This means you can constantly reset the level with the elevator and some luck with the stairs. Monster Musk even stacks on top of that. This way you can farm hundreds of materials in a single day by resetting the level over and over again. This can also work for the Skull Cavern, but it's only practical if you're lucky and the very early level is infested. If you want to, you can also use a tool like Mousypound's Map Predictor. Upload your save file and you can see which floor the infested floors will be in on certain days. I've heard that the tool isn't always accurate, but I wanted to mention this anyway and it worked for a few times I've used it. Before we end this video, thank you so much for watching. Like the video, subscribe to my channel, turn on notifications or join my Discord server if you want. You can also watch me stream on YouTube or Twitch. But otherwise, have a nice day and see you in my next video.